My smart home revealed both the problem and the solution to my home internet connectivity issues. We had pretty slow or spotty connectivity throughout the house on what was supposed to be gigabit speed, but I never really saw those fast speeds. And more importantly, neither did my HomePod mini. I'm Patrick Hunt, and I want you to like smart home tech as much as I do. Real solutions with Matter, Apple Home, and a little creativity. Weekly, I'll show you how small upgrades can make a big difference. Welcome. We walked into this house five years ago and stuck a router in the corner of the family room where the internet comes into the house. And we haven't touched it since. Giant white box, very central placement, cables running through the wall. Does this sound familiar? Because I'm confident a lot of people are dealing with this same situation. Check out this disaster at my parents' house. I told them I'd give them a shout out in this episode. They're laughing right now. Our optical network terminal, or ONT, is on the outside wall here and an ethernet cable just runs into the house and into the back of our Verizon router. It's very ugly, we've always wanted to move it just to clean up this part of the house. Over the years we started to see issues. Our live camera feeds were slow to load, my wife's internet connection in her office had spotty connectivity. I'm going to detail some of the troubleshooting steps that I took which may actually work for you without having to go to the lengths that I did to fix my Wi-Fi issues. So I decided to clean up and organize the devices on our router a little bit. And somebody in your house should probably be doing this periodically just to see if all the devices are friendly or actually in use. I enabled the IoT 2.4 gigahertz band in our Verizon router. Essentially, this is a dedicated band for all of your smart home devices, all the ones that use Wi-Fi for connectivity. And it frees up the five gigahertz band to prioritize your phones, your computers, your tablets, things of that nature. And I made a terrible mistake. I moved our cameras over to that network as well and they all but stopped working essentially. They wouldn't load, you couldn't see any live view. I'm no expert, but I think Verizon throttles this network because switches and plugs don't really need speed, but cameras do. So I moved the cameras back to the primary network, which has something called band steering. And this is a mix between the five gigahertz band and the 2.4 gigahertz band. And the router basically decides which band your device is gonna be connecting to primarily. After this, the router was cleaned up, but I still had my Wi-Fi issues. I guess I assumed I would find an obvious culprit. The straw that broke the camel's back was when we got a HomePod mini, and I couldn't get through one song streaming without the stream dropping and often never recovering. And at first, it wasn't even obvious that it was a Wi-Fi issue. I thought it was a setting or a defect in the HomePod. So first, I started troubleshooting the HomePod. I even got on Apple phone support and tried to work through some settings and I came up with nothing. Now, if you don't know, Spotify isn't natively supported on HomePods, so it's actually just streaming through AirPlay. And this is two simultaneous streams. There's the internet to your phone, and then your phone to the HomePod. Evidently, this is actually pretty taxing on bandwidth. So after some troubleshooting, I hadn't really narrowed down the culprit. Wi-Fi was in the back of my head, but I wasn't confident it was related at all. But the big breakthrough came is when we set up the Eve Play, and I experienced those same dropouts it was definitely our internet. I'm gonna get a bit into the weeds on the troubleshooting steps that I took here, so skip ahead to the next chapter if you don't wanna deal with this. First, band steering. It's a great feature, but it might actually be affecting streaming. But if you recall, I moved those cameras back to that primary network that had band steering. So I couldn't just turn off that 2.4 gigahertz band, which actually shares the same name as the five gigahertz band. I decided to ditch the dedicated 2.4 gigahertz IoT band from Verizon. I then changed the name of that primary 2.4 gigahertz band, effectively disabling band steering. I then moved all of my devices back from that IoT band to the primary 2.4 gigahertz band. I thought this did the trick. Spotify was functioning a lot better. Dropouts did happen sometimes, but they recovered very quickly and it wasn't as often. You might actually be able to stop here and do no more. But for me, this all still seemed wrong. I was paying for gigabit speed, which worked well over a wired connection. It was just the wireless connections that weren't even close. And to be clear, one gigabit per second is absolutely overkill for the average person. You really do not need it if it's working right. So I started looking into mesh Wi-Fi systems. And to be honest, you could probably go with one of several different options, but for the purposes of this video and my house, I went with the Eero 6 Plus three node pack for $225. Uh, each one of these nodes can cover up to 1,500 square feet, and my house is about 2,700 square feet. There's a bit of foreshadowing happening here, but I don't want to ruin the surprise. So what exactly is a mesh Wi-Fi network? Well, it's the same thing as any other mesh network that I've described on here. It's a network of nodes that connect to each other to strengthen the network 
instead of all connecting back independently to one home base, ignoring each other. One thing that I learned about a mesh Wi-Fi network, that while adding more nodes may strengthen the network, the signal will be better, the speeds will be cut down with every node that you add, maybe even halving the speed from the node to your devices. In preparation to making this video, I went around my house with my phone and fast.com to get an idea of the different speeds in the different parts of the house. It ranged from the low 100 megabits per second to around 750 megabits per second closest to the router. Near the HomePod Mini in the bedroom and the Eve Play here in the living room, I was seeing pretty low speeds. Enter the 6 Plus by Eero, which is an Amazon company. I didn't go with the Pro because it was way too expensive. And I didn't go with the newest generation, the 7 series, because it was way too expensive. And honestly, going from my basic bare bones setup to this mesh Wi-Fi, I knew was gonna be a huge jump. And the 6 Plus accommodates gig speed anyway, so it had exactly what I needed. I downloaded the app and followed the instructions to connect the first Eero. I was actually able to take the Verizon router out of the equation entirely because that ONT on the outside wall sends ethernet in, and I can just connect the ethernet into the back of the first Eero. But if you have a coax coming in through the wall or you have Fios TV that also requires coax, then you'll likely need to keep that Verizon router in place and put it in bridge mode. And you can just connect the Eero into the back of the Verizon router. At this point, that Verizon router is just acting as a bridge from coax to ethernet, essentially. After connecting the first Eero, I hardwired the second one in the basement right below the first one. And the third one connected wirelessly in my wife's office upstairs. If you use the same SSID and password as your previous network, then all of the devices that were connected to that old network will automatically connect to the new Eero network. Upon first test, my speeds didn't break 250 megabits per second just about anywhere in the house. So I called Eero support at about 11 p.m. one night, and they helped me understand the situation a little bit better. First, for 2,700 square feet, I actually only need two Eero's and unnecessarily having more could actually hurt my Wi-Fi speeds. And then second, have them essentially stacked vertically in the house, uh, has them competing with each other for coverage. So the recommendation from customer service was to actually remove the node that was in my wife's office, that was the wireless one, remove it entirely, and then the one in the basement that was hardwired, we're gonna move it diagonally across the house, which conveniently landed in our storage room in the basement. There's no ethernet in that room, so that one now became a wireless node. And this being a wireless node versus a wired node doesn't really seem to be affecting the speeds too greatly. And I also took this opportunity to put a switch in that room as well. So I plugged a switch into the back of the Eero, basically extending the ethernet ports. And I put our Raspberry Pi in there I put the Ring base station in there, and I put the Hue bridge in there as well. So I was really able to clean up the family room where all these devices were kind of just shoved into the corners. But you ready for a jump scare? This is what the storage room looks like now. Ah, look away, it's a work in progress. Speed tests throughout the house now puts every room at about 650 megabits per second, which isn't as fast as the fastest speeds that I was getting from the Verizon router, but it's light years ahead of the slowest speeds that I was getting out of the Verizon router. So I will take it. And so for the real test, not a single Spotify dropout in about three weeks since I installed it. My wife's office coverage equal to the rest of the house. And when we live stream our cameras, it happens instantaneously. I typically want the latest and greatest, but the new 7 series models are a bit overkill for me. An Alexa smart home can make use of all the extras that it comes with, like the thread radio and the Zigbee radio, but as an Apple Home user, I unfortunately cannot, but that's okay. I still think that this is a good purchase for anyone that's experiencing Wi-Fi issues. But what else is contributing to better Wi-Fi overall in my house? About two thirds of my devices are using the thread protocol or the Zigbee protocol, and I've really cut down on buying Wi-Fi devices. They're great for setup, but in the long run, you're gonna wish that you started building on a dedicated protocol. I recommend Thread, which I've never spoken about on this channel. Thread, 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 thread. Comment if you wanna see me demolish my parents' junk drawer of a home network, since the first project at their house went so well. Congratulations to the giveaway winners. You've been contacted to claim your devices. Thank you all so much, and I will see you next week.